section five of the American Revolution, and we are actually wrapping up the American Revolution. So for those of you at home, this will kind of end our unit and make sure that you have done all of the work for this unit uh, because the study guide will be coming at you when we return from the holidays. So we're on section five. So think about it. I want you all to look at this picture here. The American painter Benjamin West began a portrait of the men who negotiated the Treaty of Paris. The Treaty of Paris is going to be the treaty that ends the American Revolution. The British officials refused to pose. So the painting was never finished. They wouldn't even pose signing the treaty to end the war because they had lost. What does this painting reveal about the British response to losing the war? Sour. Sour. Yeah, they were kind of poor sports. Someone said, well, yeah, they didn't have good sportsmanship. They were bitter about it. They couldn't believe it. The disbelief. How could they lose the war? They had the best army, the best navy in the whole world. And so they're in disbelief that they have surrendered, that they have lost this war. And so we're going to kind of go through some uh, facts today for you. This whole thing today is why the Americans won and the results of it, okay? So in November of 1783, I want to highlight this, the last British ships and troops left the colonies, okay? And so it's over by the end of 1783. Americans won independence even though they faced obstacles. And this, these next four lines, it's what the world and the British can't wrap their heads around. The Americans lacked training and experience. We were a ragtag army of inexperienced soldiers. In some places, and we've even discussed, we didn't even have an army. We just have, we just had, you know, guerrilla bands here. And so it's like, wait a minute. We lacked training and experience, and we still beat the best army in the world. We were low on supplies and weapons. You know, the British, they had blockaded, they had 100 warships blockading our ports. We didn't have supplies and weapons all the time. The British forces were among the best trained in the world. How could they lose? And British troops had more experience, and they were well supplied. And the Americans weren't. And everyone's going, how could this happen? So let's talk about how it could happen. We had better leadership. Now, on better leadership, I need you to put... George Washington, and the Second Continental Congress. George Washington was a great commander who inspired his men to great, great loyalty. Okay? But the Second Continental Congress, they're running the war. They're kind of running our temporary government, basically, what's going on. And so we have better leadership. Um, in England, it's being run by King George III in Parliament. Does King George III in Parliament, do they even... Can they even understand the way the Americans are thinking? No. No. We have foreign aid, France. We have a knowledge of the land. It's vast. Do you remember that when we talked about the size of Great Britain, and it, it's not even as big as some of our states that we have now, right? Do you think that in Great Britain they could even grasp the size of the Americas at this time? They can't wrap their heads even around it. We have knowledge of land, and it was a vast area, okay? And we had a knowledge of land. We had that home court advantage, okay? We knew where to hide. We knew where to go, where to cross a river at, where not to cross a river at, etc. And we have motivation. Our big motivation, you can put this down if you don't remember it, defending our homes. We are defending our homes and our families, and that is our biggest motivation. Okay, so it's, um, it, it's, we won, and everyone's still going, but how did you win? Well, these are four reasons why we won. So let's look at this Treaty of Paris. What are the terms? The United States, we are officially independent. Not just because we said it, but Britain is like, okay, go be your own country. Okay, that's huge. Our boundaries are going to be the Mississippi River in the west, which is right here, Canada in the north, right here, and Spanish Florida to the south. That's right. Florida went back to Spain. 
Florida was owned by England after the Treaty of Paris, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now it goes back to Spain. So Florida has switched back and forth several times. The British said they would return any enslaved people they had captured, and the United States said we would return any property that we seized from loyalists. You need to highlight this. Neither side lived up to the treaty's terms. They're not going to return any and all the enslaved people, and we're not going to return all the property we seized from loyalists. Neither side's going to live up to the terms of the treaty. Let's look at the results, and there's a lot of it. The war lasted eight years. That's going to be a test question. How long did the war last? Eight years. 25,700 Americans died. The British suffered 10,000 military deaths. 1,400 Americans were still considered missing. 8,200 were wounded. And some of these wounded were left with permanent disabilities and you need put from, not form, from amputated limbs. I want you to understand during this time period and even up into the Civil War time period, and we'll discuss this later on next semester, if they were shot in the arm or the leg, and, and it, nowadays it would be something that we could save fairly easy, you understand? Back then, they didn't have the, the medicine, um, the tools, and a lot of times on these um, field hospitals, they didn't have time. It was just easier to cut off the limb and, and just kind of move on. They didn't have time to nurse them back to health and save a limb. And so a lot of those were amputees. Many soldiers who survived the war left the army with no money. So the government says, hey, what we're going to do is we'll give you some land in the West. Is this a good thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to help the West get settled. It, it, and so it's going to give them something for fighting in the army. And so they can go West and they can settle on the land. But now here is the crux of the problem, too. Who is in the Western lands? Spain. Indians. Native Americans. <coughs> The war also left us with a debt of $27 million. Okay? Is that a lot of money back then? That's a lot of money now just for us, but back then, yes. <coughs> Between 60,000 and 100,000 loyalists left the United States during and after the war, and most loyalists went to Canada. They didn't want to stay in the United States. I guess that maybe they didn't believe in the independence or maybe they felt like there would be retaliation for being loyalist. And so they chose to leave. It's kind of sad, huh? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, yeah. Now, this is what we get. Our American Revolution, you need to highlight this slide, it's not just a war, but it's a change in ideas about the government. Oh, yeah, we, we've got a new country now, but we've got some questions here. We're going to have republicanism. We have a republic. This idea, idea said that instead of a king, the people would rule. And it all sounds really good in your head and on paper, but our main issue now, after the war, is how do we shape this government? How do we shape this government? How do we build this government? We know that we want the people to rule. We know we don't want an absolute monarch or a king. But what do we know beyond that? So, what I want you to understand, and uh, when we go into our next chapters, you'll kind of understand, because it's going to be it's going to be trial and error. It's like building a plane while you're in the air. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of like what it's going to be building our new government. It's just going to be we're kind of building it as we go along. And we're going to make some mistakes, and we're going to have to, we're going to have one government, and we're going to be like, oh, this is not working, and then we're going to have to meet again and do a new government document, which is our Constitution today. But we don't originally start out with that. So it's literally like we're building a plane in the air. We're just kind of learning as we go what works and what doesn't work. And so now that we have won our independence, now we have to shape our government and it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be an easy job. Everybody has a lot of ideas, but will they all work? Okay? Questions? Comments? We're good.